Gion mi mehucha, gabo je am prish gabi mi rish. You're too late. You will not get him. It was with great joy that I received your last letter. Know that you are missed terribly here in India. If my calculations are correct and the International Postal Service is kind, this letter will keep you company as you make the final leg of your journey to Scotland. I hesitate to say anything for fear you'll think me foolish, even hysterical. Your father made it his life's work to research his family's twisted history. This and his obsession with the occult combined to unravel his poor mind. John loved his family and his family home, but he hated and mistrusted them in equal measure. Son, beware of the Gordons. Blood is not always thicker than water. Your loving mother.
A key and, and, and some sort of broken toy. Should I even try to read any real meaning into all of this? A note about a library. A key and, and, and some sort of broken toy. Should I even try to read any real meaning into all of this? A note about a library. A key and, and, and some sort of broken toy. Should I even try to read any real meaning into all of this? We have arrived, sir. Welcome, Mr. Gordon. I'm Andrew Harrison. Mr. Harrison, it's good to finally meet you. From our correspondence, I expected you to be older. Ah, uh, thank you. I'll lead the way. It's quite dark already. We can continue to talk inside. arrived, my lady. David, welcome to Skahandu House. Lady Margaret, how kind of you to welcome me in person at such a late hour. If I may, I would like to know more about my father's last days. It is too late in the day for such morbid talk. You do look so very much like John, though. An impressive building. Skahandu, though. Unusual. What, what is its meaning? Unusual only if you have not bothered to study Gaelic. It means Black Mirror House. Many generations of the Gordon family have been master of this house. It is a great responsibility. Perhaps the greatest a man could bear. Angus, please show Master David to his room. Yes, ma'am. I trust you had a pleasant journey. This place is rather remote, even for Scotland. It was most pleasing, thank you. I was fortunate enough to stop off in several fascinating places on my way here. How long have you been practicing law? I came to the bar a few years ago. I'm at Chambers in Edinburgh with lawyers who have served the Gordon family for generations. I'm embarrassed to ask, but it is my job. Have you proof of who you say you are? You are David Gordon, son of the late John Gordon. Please, I quite understand. Here you are. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. What a curious object. No, it's nothing, just a trinket from India that I carry for luck. 
I see. I trust it brings you all the luck you deserve. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some work waiting for me in the library. I could not in good conscience sleep with it unfinished. I'll be staying in the house for a few days, so no doubt we'll bump into each other again. Don't worry, Mr. Gordon. You're in good hands here. Please follow me, Master David. Your grandfather, his lordship Edward Gordon. There is no denying it. We are family. Somebody still cares. Maybe you weren't as bad as Mother believed. Grandfather Edward. Father never spoke of you, but Mother never had a kind word to say. You were the worst of the lot, she said. Pieces of some kind of drawing. How odd. Uh, this way, sir. If you These would be are so all kind family members. Follow me, sir. Yes, sir. The Gordons are one of the oldest families in Scotland. Your room is this way. Any time you're ready, sir. Uh, this way, sir. Hmm? That is the master's study, sir, but there'll be plenty of time to examine it in the light tomorrow. Does that sometimes, sir? Uh, 
Lady Gordon expects you for breakfast at eight, sir. Thank you. Lady Gordon called you Angus? Uh, pleased to meet you, Angus. Yes, sir. She did. I am Mr. McKinnon. Uh, Mr. McKinnon, yes. Um, I'd advise you not to leave the room tonight. Ticking clocks are not the worst thing you may encounter in the house at night, if you don't know your way around. Sleep well, sir. Maybe he's more of a morning person. I doubt this place could ever be properly warm. I got somewhat turned around following Angus through the house. Sorry, Mr. McKinnon. But I think my room is probably around here somewhere. Hold on. This looks like... Wait a moment. This is a piece of a model. Glad I don't have to carry you around anymore. Mr. McKinnon lifted you up with ease. This handsome, cheery, sober man. He's not the one I remember from my childhood. Without some obscure local law that required me being here in person, I would probably never have come. <laughs> A pigeon amongst the cats. Sorry to inform you of death of John Gordon. Stop. Please return to Skahundu House. Stop. Andrew Harrison, lawyer. Stop. I should get a new passport. This one's filling up. Hmm. Not many matches left. Barely see my hand in front of me. My faithful friend, Insomnia. I wonder if Andrew has left the library yet. My faithful friend, Insomnia. I wonder if Andrew has left the library yet. <sighs> I can barely see my hand in front of me. Everything I ever owned could fit in there, five times over. In an old house like this one, sooner or later no drawer stays empty. More pieces of the same drawing. Maybe I can make out what it shows if I had enough of them. The candle is nearly gone, but it should do for a while once lit. Ah, just what I need. Hold on. What's this? Ah, 
I will put your high praise of Scottish water to the test, Father. Later. No, this isn't right. There should be a room here. No, this isn't what I need either. Where is it? <coughs> Good evening, Master David. You're up late. I'm having trouble sleeping, and I thought I'd do some exploring. Selected Poems by Edgar Allan Poe. Take this kiss upon the brow, and in parting from you now, thus much let me avow. You are not wrong who deem that my days have been a dream. Yet, if hope has flown away, in a night or in a day, in a vision or in none, is it therefore the less gone? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. A dream within a dream. Is this what Father meant by a family of snakes? <laughs> Despair by a man called Howard Phillips Lovecraft. Ghastly shades of bygone gladness, clawing fiends of future sadness, mingle in a cloud of madness ever on the soul to lie. Thus the living, lone and sobbing, in the throes of anguish throbbing, with the loathsome furies robbing night and noon of peace and rest. But beyond the groans and grating of abhorrent life is waiting, Sweet oblivion, culminating all the years of fruitless quest. The words of a troubled soul. The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. I started reading this, though never got round to finishing it. The gentle maid whose hapless tale these melancholy pages speak. Say, gracious lady, shall she fail to draw the tear adown from thy cheek? Hmm. Ghosts, legends, ancient history. Where's the rest of them?
Barging into someone's bedroom in the middle of the night is not how to earn their trust. Father must have left something for me in the master's study. I suppose I could ask Mr. McKinnon to open it for me in the morning, but I'll have him breathing down my neck. And who knows what I'm to find. Shame. Attics often speak volumes about the owners of a house. Just how old is the Gordon clan? For all I know, it could stretch back to Roman times or even further. An earring. I doubt it was buried in the ashes on purpose. Someone must have lost it. The cold doesn't seem to affect the residents of this house. All the fires are fighting a losing battle against the draft.
Contrary to everything I've learned so far about Grandfather Edward, Lady Margaret still worships him. I used to regale my Indian school friends with tales of knights in shining armor. Oh, locked. 